Welcome to our faith community of Sacred Heart. My name is Julie Whitnell. I do have a few announcements this morning, or this afternoon, before Mass. Tomorrow morning, immediately following the 8.30 Mass, and from 12 noon to 1 p.m., all are invited to an open house in the education building for our PSR classes. Catechists and other volunteers are available tomorrow morning after Mass to help you register for the PSR classes, which will begin on September 8th. Handmade backpacks of all sizes will be sold after the 8.30 and 11 a.m. Masses tomorrow as a fundraiser for our parish's maintenance fund. Each backpack sells for $15. The adult choir will begin rehearsals again on Wednesday, August 28th at 7 p.m. here in the church. New members are very welcome and much needed. Contact the parish office for more information. Please save the date for our parish picnic, which is scheduled for Sunday, September 29th. Watch for further details as we grow nearer to the date. And lastly, after Mass today, please stop to visit with one of our Tolton students to support the annual raffle for Father Tolton Athletics. Tickets are $20 each, and again, the proceeds do support the athletic department. Today we observe the liturgy of the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time, in which Jesus issues an invitation to all to the banquet of the Lord. If you are visiting with us or new to Columbia, we extend a special welcome. To help you fully participate in this liturgy, you will find the scripture readings in the sponsorial psalm in the hymnal under number 1150. The numbers for the hymns and some parts of the Mass are on the hymn board. Please take a moment and see that your cell phone is silenced or turned off during Mass. We appreciate that. And at this time, we invite you to stand and please remain standing as you greet or introduce yourself to those around you.
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. On this 20th Sunday in ordinary time, we know it is not so ordinary because as the Lord says in the Gospel, He invites us to an extraordinary feast. A feast of communion with Himself, of His glorious, risen, light and life-giving flesh and blood. We are not worthy of that, but He is the one who invites us. And he will make us worthy. So let's acknowledge our sins, trusting in the Savior, and trusting in His forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the bread that comes down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And give us your flesh and blood as virtue for our journey to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are our life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
She has sent out her neighbors. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here to the one who lacks understanding. She says, come, eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do we really think that we have all that we need? 
There was a rich man in the gospel who thought he had all he needed. And God said to him, you fool. This will not your life will be demanded of you. It's also not just about money. Am I full with pride or anger or lust? Name any of us. The trust in God wants to realize that I am not enough. And this world isn't enough. Does God owe me eternal life? If for no other reason than because I'm basically a good person. And I was polite and there's dinner parties regularly every Sunday or thereabouts. Am I living a law with my heart somewhere else? When you come here, do you bring your heart? The Jews in the gospel, the, the disciples of Jesus, they liked dinner parties. Jesus fed them very well when he multiplied the loaves and the fishes. That was the best tasting fish and chips they had ever had. <laughs> but then, Jesus began to say that fish and chips weren't enough. He didn't just want to fill their bellies, the external thing. He wanted to give them a whole new life. We don't need the mass to fill our bellies. The man in the desert filled bellies. We have lots of forms and shape, shapes of man in our lives. Wonderfully fill our bellies. And what does Jesus say about it? All we ever need is man. Then we'll die. But whoever eats the bread I will be, will live forever. And the bread that I will be is my flesh for the life of the world. There's a very important pattern throughout John's Gospel. Jesus says something outlandish, <laughs> like, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Of course, Nicodemus got confused. How can a man, once he's grown old, Flying back in the womb and be born again. And Jesus explains, no, not born again literally or physically, but born again in faith in the Holy Spirit, baptism. It's a common pattern in John, where Jesus says something, the crowd misunderstand, and then he clarifies. But that pattern is broken here. The people get confused. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And with a perfect opportunity for Jesus to say, no, no, I didn't mean flesh literally. But he doesn't. Instead, he comes back with stronger language. In fact, he mentions eating his flesh and drinking his blood six times after the Jews asked for a clarification. What's our response? That's not the kind of dinner party I was thinking about. <laughs> Do we understand that, that dining at God's table, not about a meal, but about changing our lives? Maybe it's about a meal that changes our lives. He wants to be the life within us that changes our life. It's why St. Paul elsewhere writes, I, I live now, not I, but Christ lives in me. To receive the divine life is no longer to cling to my world of my life. Now, where else in the Gospel of John do we hear this word, flesh? Think back to the beginning of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. When Jesus says that we must eat the flesh of the Son of Man, he's talking about communion with the second person of the Trinity, who became man. Our communion is true flesh 
and blood, which doesn't refer to this earthly stuff that we carry around. Our communion is risen, glorified flesh and blood. The real presence on the altar is a living presence of the risen Christ. Risen flesh and blood. The most real kind. The transfiguration account in the gospel gives a hint of what risen and glorified Jesus is like. His face shone like the sun, and his garments became bright as light. That's the, the spiritual presence, the most real presence in the Eucharist that we consume. We eat glory and light. Capital L light. God is light. Don't, don't disbelieve that just because our earthly eyes can't see it. As a woman is pregnant with the real presence of her child within her womb, we become pregnant with the real presence of the risen Christ through Holy Communion. This is wisdom's house, wisdom's pillars, wisdom's meat and wine. We're certainly welcome to God's dinner party. But I encourage you to approach with fear and trembling to this table, without presumption, but with faith and the glory we are all unworthy to receive. So here's the homework for the week. What is it about your current life that the divine, glorious, living flesh that you receive in the Eucharist need to transform? This week, think about what, what needs to change in my life. And then when you come to receive Holy Communion, receive the divine light, glorious light, and its power to you.
Let's present our name. The response to our decisions is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we who eat the living bread and drink from the promise of life, share fully in the Paschal mystery, be raised up on the last day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the growth of peace throughout the world, may leaders of nations be gifted with wisdom and have the courage to seek out a new paths to promote the good of the human family, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, those who cannot work, and those who have no shelter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and teachers at the start of another school year, may the Holy Spirit inspire them to open their hearts and minds to a wealth of new experiences and help them make right choices, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal rest of the Nuncio Kino, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For these prayers and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, feed us with the bread of life and lead us deeper in faith so that all that we do may be transformed into the goodness truth and the beauty of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nerves of the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And he may give us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray over advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, <coughs> give kind and to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and within him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
partakers of Christ, through these sacraments we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Have a beautiful Sunday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you.